Hey YouTube, it has been a while since I've done a weekly quickie. It has not been weekly at all. Um, I've been doing a few less shoots, um, but I've started doing a whole bunch of shoots again and kind of miss doing this. So, um, since my last videos, like a lot of my stuff historically has been darker backgrounds, um, and I created a light setup for light backgrounds that is just insane. This is all single light. That is a single light white setup. Um, I got a white continuous background. I've got a piece of wood on the floor and I have a huge curtain to camera left. Um, it's made of projector overhead. Um, like you can use it as background projector stuff. It's bought it from a fabric store. And there's about a hundred square feet of area that I've closed off and I put a light on the other side of that running pretty much full power and the result is an, just a wash um, just a wash of white light um, there's a white wall to camera right so it's reflected back and it's just like it's it makes um, it makes things so dead easy actually I mean you can see in the eyeballs there we have this huge area to the left that is lit but the crazy thing about it is I can shoot with the models back to that or I can shoot with my back to that and it all just gives a different effect I'm gonna do a video on that too but um, this is just a video on being a little bit more scientific on white so I'm gonna dial this photo one of these photos in uh, one with good eyes. Let's use that one. So, I mean, that's straight out of camera. It looks pretty decent. They're going to raw, losing the base curve or the JPEG preview. I don't remember which it is. But let's look at this. So, it's white. Um, what I sometimes find is I do something and I like how it looks. Then I upload it and I don't like it. A tint that I see in a background when I see it somewhere else with a white background so remove these what I uh, let's let's talk about this a little bit I'm gonna create an area here and oh, an area here and talk about those so these are now live samples um, RGB means red green blue so this is a breakdown of a number between 0 and 255 of the amount of red, the amount of green, and the amount of blue. So if these are all maxed out, if these are all 255, that means white. Now note, this is almost white over here, but not quite. Um, but that is max red, max green, max blue. Um, interestingly, when these the closer these numbers are to each other, the more you're looking at a neutral gray. So that's also really important. But the more that these numbers differ, let's do something like that. The more that these numbers differ, so this is max red lower green and a lot lower blue that means that this is a ready tint because red is dominant so this is a really useful thing to do when you're working with when you're working with whites so let's just start off and do some basic stuff on this photo before before tweaking that let's just get this to where I want it to be I may be okay with overexposing that hand to get the face where I want it to be it definitely, even though it's white, I want to bring in darks in the face. Um, I'm more likely on a white scene to... Oh, I didn't realize that. The, that's where our lines are. Those are our selected areas. I'd never noticed that before. So I'm more like... I'm less likely to do an S-curve here. I'm more likely to do a... I don't know what you call this. Bring that down. Um, let's 
So I'm just doing my normal kind of edit here. I'm going to bring up detail because the skin is so good. I will do some skin retouch, but I, or I would do some skin retouch in this. I'm not for this video, but that's what I want. Um, what I should have done first was white balance because that's way too warm. This is where I'm starting to get the colors to where I want them. So note, note how we're going over here. Note what the temperature is doing. We're going from warm, super strong reds, to cold, super strong blues. And visually for me, like, I don't know why my camera thinks, my camera seems to think the right white balance of this is over 6,000, but I pretty much every time I use these Godoxes and I use a, use my color card, I know it's closer down to the five. Um, the, the canvas, or the, the, for sure, the fabric that I use gives a bit of a yellow tint so now if we look at the ones here in the bottom you can see how they are obviously more yellow than that but this is getting to the natural where I want um, I'm looking at these numbers so it's definitely bluey more bluey which I prefer to more ready or greeny a green tint on a on what is I'm air quoting here a white background looks horrible when you see it against white. A bluey tint for me looks better. So, but I'm still gonna try and still, so I have the I have the face to kind of where I want it. I'm gonna be happy with that. Add a little bit more contrast. A little bit more saturation. There's various ways I could do the saturation here. Um, I'm going to even out the skin a little bit by peaking that red and I'm going to saturate the skin a little bit by doing that. So I'm okay with that. I could even pop the eyes. Uh, where is it? not seeing an effect there it's fairly it's fairly wide actually it's fairly wide I'll probably after this I'll probably use portrait pro to pop the eyes but I won't include that in this video so I like where that is um, I could tame that lip color a little bit but I don't really care okay so I like where that is in general. Let's just say we'll call that done. Now, what can we do about this? This is going to look fairly... Numbers are pretty close. It's going to look like a bluey gray over here, if against a white background. And this is going to look fairly white, but not white. So I'm not really aiming for pure white. Um, because that can be weird too. Whoa, I like that. What just happened there? By dropping the highlights? Huh, that's interesting. But these numbers are now, we're now heading into like a light gray, which I actually like. And I mean, it makes, look how that makes the skin pop. But anyway, this is about white. So if I pull the highlights up, that's effectively, look at this histogram here when I do this. It's moving stuff at the top of the histogram around, which we can do in so many ways in Darktable, but this is a simple way. But also look what it's doing. Like look at these, this edge and this edge. It's creating it's definitely creating a, an edging there. I don't, oh, especially there. It's not, I don't, mm, 
I don't know if that's going to be an issue. Um, we might have to defringe. We might have to use chromatic aberration removal. It's this side looks more like chromatic aberration. I don't really understand these things. I'm more like as much as some but to me a purple fringe is chromatic more chromatic aberration than a than a greeny fringe like that um, the dark table chromatic aberration aberration module does away with the purpley fringe really really well um, but not so much that green so maybe that's not chromatic aberration but let's play with this and let's get these numbers up and let's see if we can do that without messing with the skin tone which we can so here this is practically white we have some blown out stuff here but not that I care this is more of a gray but it's an even gray it's got a bluer tint to it and then we can very subtly play around over here the white is gonna be our highlight and I like that I like what that did to the skin Um, so we're maxing out blue over here, less green, so we're basically, if we had a spectrum, color spectrum here, we'd be short a little bit of green, but if I move that in towards the greens, I'm evening out these numbers between these two, but as I'm moving away from the reds, I'm dropping that red number. So, in a white scene, the white dot on this is very useful. Like there, look where the greens went at the expense of blue and red. Then look where the red went with the expense of green. So, a little bit objective subjective but because we really have a subject here that is our low lights um, anything we do down here that affects the background we can go in the opposite direction here to compensate for the effect that it had on the highlights that were part of the subject so I can't I kind of like that that looks a little bit chromatic aberration -y. where is chromatic aberration we're there that had a tiny effect what about here no really the fringe not yeah a little bit but again, at the at, at the resolutions this is going to be, these are not horrific. This is this is not horrific. This overexposure on the hand, I'm okay with, because because the eyes are drawn to the eyes. There's nothing blown out in the hair here that offends me. Like these are not just. This is fine. Um. <coughs> These numbers now are pretty so we've got a we've got a similar effectively if that blue was dropped we would have gray. So if I have a higher number here, significantly higher, I like it to be the blue because it gives a kind of crispness that I personally like. So I am liking that. What else do I want to do with this? sharpen a little bit because I'm going to do skin retouching which is going to soften a little bit but I like I like that do I want to do anything else with that no I'll show you though the color balance module can also be really good here I mean look at those numbers over on the left we're talking about highlight areas so I can control that. I can control the red of the entire thing 
using that red slider. So those are fine, those are fine tuned. I mean, doing it here, just personally, I find this so nice and visual that I really love it as a module. Um, so let's call that done. Let's see how those, let's clone that. Let's copy all of those, apply them to everything. A little bit hotter on this one. Probably, yeah, I mean, this is kind of more shadow by that. Probably these other ones could do with a little bit of a drop in exposure. Yeah, because that hand is not, that hand is not there. And how do I want to drop that? Um, various ways, but I'll just use this. That is better. Hello in that one. I happened to pick the one with the shadow from the hand getting less light to the face, so maybe it wasn't the best, but I feel like in this one I want to bring this area up a little bit, which I could use various tools for, like I could use the shadows tool. I could use shadows and highlights, but I'm going to do that. So that just brought this lower stuff up. Um, so those settings are better for that one, that one. And there we have a fairly even set of six. Well, let's see how I did with this one. So again, this looks this looks kind of magenta, doesn't it? Let's have a look at that. Uh, I want an area. Looking at that. That is very blue. Um, so, but this is, on the other hand is quite white overall. So that one is much more even. It's still got more blue in it than the others. So let's play. What if we reset that? Those even out a lot. A lot. So if I then just... I still have my slight strength towards the blue. Pretty damn good. Uh, I don't want to crop shape, I just want to. Yeah, I mean, for a quick. That's just, it's kind of a testament to how evenly that light setup works. The fact that a full body shot took exactly the same settings almost as a headshot to get the same kind of even lighting, um, which is pretty crazy. So that's all I really wanted to do with this. Um, it was really just a demonstration of how this can be a useful second opinion over what you're seeing with your eye in terms of um, color matching, color coordinating, getting a color tint that you want. Um, and that's all I got today. Have a good one. Bye. Oh, I should say at the start of these videos, please like and subscribe. Thanks.